Good morning and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Impla. I am your host, Dr. Impla Chester. You know what I like to do on my show? I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you. I want you to be your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today, I want you to be fired up about a book entitled Darkness Before the Dawn. Its author is Charles Gates Jr., and I am about to tell you to get ready. You know what I'm going to say? Go on. Get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea because we are about to get started. Good morning, Charles. Thank you so much for joining me on Daily Spark today. Good morning, Dr. Angela. Thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor to be here. No problem. Now, I love it because you have a book of poetry, and I do love a good book of poetry. Now, before we get started, though, um, I always ask uh, my guests kind of the same questions, and that is in the beginning, because I want people to feel like, you know, we're sitting down and having coffee together. So that question is, what makes Charles, Charles? What makes you, you? Well, what makes uh, me me is that uh, I've been put in situations where um, my back was against the wall and had no uh, no uh, choice but to overcome and to climb that wall over the obstacles that were placed before me because uh, it's out of that or admit defeat and uh, I wasn't uh, about to let the things happening to me overcome me, but mm-hmm. they, they were actually used to catapult me toward a uh, a role, a a journey that I never expected. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I I love that you say that because so many times um, I think that people allow their circumstances or situations to actually pull them down instead of using that energy to catapult them forward to help them stay focused to achieve whatever it is that they're that they're trying to do. Did you find that you are a a self-motivated person? Like, are you able to keep yourself going forward? Do you like encouragement for others? How did you, how did you keep the momentum to move forward? Well, um, I got, I got to say it's a little bit of both. Um, I found, um, through poetry, I found a motivation to, uh, to answer like the questions I laid out before me and, uh, like what, everything happening to me means, but mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the inspiration and the shove from my f- closest friends and family, I would have never done anything with it. And um, I would have uh, probably been crushed, been defeated because uh, mm-hmm. the mind is, uh, is uh, like plagues you when you're alone and stuff. So I, I couldn't have done it without uh, God's guidance and uh, the, Mm-hmm. Council of some great friends and family. Mm-hmm. And you know, there is nothing like having a really great support team. You, you said that, and and thank God for our faith because I tell you, it really will keep us going through. Now, being an author, is that something that you always wanted to do, or did you find that it was just the next logical step for you? Um, actually, when I wrote my first book, um, I. I didn't want to, I wasn't writing a book, but I wrote it. I was just writing down what I felt because it felt like it was destroying me. Mm. And if I didn't get, find that outlet, if I didn't have that thing that I could plug into, it would destroy me. And mm. poetry became that, that spark, as you said, and uh, that really ignited in me the, uh, a fire, that, a, a passion to overcome and to, uh, if it weren't for the, a uh, wise council of friends that uh, so delighted in my poetry, I would have never published it in a book. And mm-hmm. <laughs> when they suggested it to me, I told them no. I said, that, <laughs> that's foolish. That's a f- foolish errand. Uh, why would I want to be that vulnerable in front of strangers? Uh, and mm-hmm. yeah, really had to overcome that fear. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that is that is so true that many people don't think about the fact that um, so many authors are kind of, they're putting themselves out there because they're they're sharing their, their thoughts, and especially when it comes to poetry. It's one thing with a, with a book of fiction um, because you understand that it's a made-up story, you know, to entertain, but, but so many times with poetry, it is, it is heartfelt. It's an expression of the person who's writing, so that is true. Mm-hmm. You do have that bit of vulnerability there. I, I, I love that. Now, your title, Darkness Before the Dawn, um, did you find that the title came to you first? Did it come out of your writings as, as you were um, kind of putting your thoughts down? How did you come up with that title? Well, um, that kind of title kind of just came out of uh, – I, I did write a poem that was has the same name that's in the mm-hmm. last chapter of my book, uh, and that influenced it, but mm-hmm. uh, that – the title itself also stems from the uh, the quote on the front cover. Even when I'm set, even when the sun sets and I'm left to face my darkest hour, even my shadow leaves my side. So the setting is um, the sun is setting, and mm-hmm. I feel like everything around me has just dissipated, and I have nothing left. Not even my shadow, who is was by me all the day long, mm-hmm. was there when my darkness set in. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. Yeah, I like that. So it's mm-hmm. really fitting for the the uh, the book. Mm-hmm. Now that that is an awesome answer, and you know, I think that um, there's somebody right now who's nodding their head saying, "Yep, I can relate to that. I can definitely relate. I, I love it." Now you. Um, you kind of talked about that there were some personal things that you had to go through. Um, how did your personal struggles affect your poetry? How did you choose what you wanted to share and, and what you wouldn't share? Well, um, everything that I felt was just pouring out of me. There were days when I would just write for 8 to 10, 12 hours in the summer and really just pour myself out and uh, it everything around me became a uh, metaphor for poetry. My life was poetry and mm-hmm. it just, it was so natural that because it, it's a part of me that it just, I had to put it down on paper because I had to evaluate what was truly happening on the inside of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. Now, um, I, I tend to ask questions that are, you know, always flip side of the coin, but this time I need a, a three-sided coin. So this question mm-hmm. applies to uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. But if you will, let's kind of break it down into three separate questions. And the question is, where were you physically when you were writing? Did you need to be separated from others? Um, are you kind of that person who likes to go off, or can you write in the middle of the living room? Um, the, the next part, uh, mentally, how did it affect you uh, emotionally when, when you were writing? And last part, uh, spiritually, did you find it to be a, a spiritual expression while you were, were writing? Um, let's start with, with physically. How did, how did you decide where, where you were going to be, the environment that you needed physically to write? Well, during that year, the year I wrote the book, uh, yeah, back in 2011, I was, uh, you got to look at the physical aspect of it, where I was homeless at the time I wrote the book. I wrote the most of the book in six months while, while I was homeless, living between mm-hmm. a tent and a shed. So mm-hmm. I was isolated. I was, uh, I felt like nobody else out there understood what I was going through. And I, my isolation eventually built walls that uh, made it hard for me to open up. And the only way to o- for me to open up was through writing, through poetry, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because it understood me. It listened to me. It empowered me to be something, to influence others, and to. Uh, challenge myself to grow as a person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that totally and completely um, 
I can I can understand how not only just your your situation of of being homeless, but just the fact that you were separated even if you didn't want to be separated, um, because of that situation. What what a remarkable story. Now, how did um, when it comes to your spirituality with it all, did you find that because you were in a state of homelessness at that particular moment, did it affect your faith in any way? Did it affect how you were were dealing with God? Oh, most definitely. Uh, spiritually, I was dead at the time I wrote the book. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was in the, te- the shed, uh, I, it was an empty room on the, it's like the second floor of a shed that the neighborhood uh, kids would party at. Um, mm-hmm. My friends would party in that room, and that's where I was living uh, during the second half of being homeless. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know at the time, but God was speaking to me in that room. Like, he was with me in the furnace. He was with me mm-hmm. in that room speaking to me, and it really comes out in my poetry. And I talk about a lot about good and evil, about following which path, the path of darkness or the path of light. Uh, mm-hmm. Like every road, it, there's two roads that set before you, and it's up to you to choose which one you will walk down. Mm-hmm. And uh, my poetry ultimately helped lead me to Jesus, to put my faith in him, uh, to mm-hmm. uh, wash away the, my sins, and to really renew my mind. Mm-hmm. And I believe that brings us to our third question. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mentally, how did, you, how did you have the fortitude to keep going? Um, well, as I said, it, uh, obstacles, instead of backing down from them, I, uh, I look for ways to overcome them. Um, mm-hmm. at the time I wrote, I was writing the book. I was being, uh, my mind was being messed with by my then ex. Uh, I was mm-hmm. involved in like, a you know, a cult. So God was breaking me out of that. It took mm-hmm. almost two years to do that. So I had all these, uh, people feeding me, ideas and ideologies in my mind and during the year I wrote the book when God was speaking to me in that room he was actually giving planting doubts of, of in my head about what they were doing was whether and whether or not that was for my benefit or their own mm-hmm. so he used my poetry to break those chains that mindset that I had to be accepted by them no I have to, uh, I'm already accepted by God mm-hmm. And he chose me to uh, be an influence and a voice for those who are going through similar things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that you you shared that because so many times I think people think that God only uses perfect people, but we understand that there are no perfect people. And God has a tendency to use people more so that are real, you know, like they've been through some stuff. And um, they're, they're able to relate to people because people go through stuff. So thank you so That's much for, right. for reminding us of that. Now, we have about a minute left in, in this particular part of the show, but I want to ask you, how did you feel when you finally held your published book in your hands? I was thrilled. I was so proud of myself, <laughs> and not only myself, but it was the first time at 21 years old, it was the first time in my life I've ever heard uh, anyone tell me, I am proud of you. That was the first moment that mm-hmm. it really, I really felt like I did something that was worthy of praise. Mm-hmm. And I knew then that I made the right decision that um, I can really influence an, uh, a crowd that uh, is broken like me, that is going through things like me, that has gone through the, uh, the darkness. And I can, through my story, show them how to uh, get out of that, how to mm-hmm. overcome, and how to apply your pain uh, to the furnace of your passion to turn it, the negative into a positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, Charles, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? The uh, title of the book is Darkness Before the Dawn by Charles Cage, Jr. 
and you may actually purchase it. I, I made it available on my website uh, because I want my fans to be able to easily access my life, and I want to be able to really show them mm -hmm. uh, my journey. And the link it, to my website is Charles Gates Jr. slash no, charlesgatesjr.com slash books. That will take Already you to... Listener, now you yeah. know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Charles Gates, Jr., and we're talking about his book, Darkness Before the Dawn. And I love how he says, you know, God uses people where they are. It doesn't matter what your situation is. God can still use you. And he's sharing his story about his personal journey. And God is definitely using him to shine a light. And I love it. Now, Charles, the next question I have for you is, um, you were, we were just talking about how you felt, you know, when you, when you held that finished published book in your hands. And it is an amazing feeling. That is so true. The, the next question I want to ask you is about how do you, um, how does your audience, how do the readers express themselves to you when you're able to either get an email from them or, or they, they stop and talk to you? What kind of feedback are you, are you getting about your book? Well, um, a lot of my readers real, were really impacted by my book of poetry, so much so that my cousins wouldn't let me go to their house without it, that they would have me recite it <laughs> in the living room. And <laughs> I was really proud of myself. And uh, there was a fan one time that came up to, me, up to me at work, and she started crying, bawling, telling me that she felt like she was a part of my story, that she's seen her story in my story, and oh, yeah. that how deeply it impacted her. And I was really touched by that. That moment, I knew I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I tell you, it is, it is so amazing how God is able to um, present to us so many times something that we didn't even know that we wanted to do. You know, when we, when we look back, you know, 10 years ago, it's like, did you ever think you were going to just like, absolutely not. But yet, once you're in it, you understand that this is exactly what you were supposed to do. And it's amazing how um, God just presents the opportunity to us. I love it. Now, for anyone who picks up a copy of your book, Darkness Before the Dawn, what do you hope your readers take away um, from your poetry? No matter where you are, there is hope for you. No matter what it looks like, there is a way, an avenue set before you to make it out of your situ the situation you're in. Mm -hmm. And there is a voice that is, ri that is rising up in you to speak on and testify of your own story. And there is uh, no dream too far out of reach for you to achieve if you can believe powerfully enough in your dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I love that. Now, when, when you get a copy of the book, do you suggest that people read it from cover to cover, like from start to finish, or are they able to just kind of pick it up and start reading any place? Can they, can they pick a page that interests them? What's your suggestion? My suggestion is to read it from cover to cover. Each, mm -hmm. each poem does work on of their own, but uh, it, if you read from cover to cover, it actually flows together like a story. So really, ah. it's, it's, the whole mm -hmm. book is one epic poem, and mm -hmm. it's a saga of journey. And if you read from cover to cover, it really empowers you even more. I opinion. love that. So it takes you along the path. It takes you on the journey if you read page after page as opposed to just kind of open it up and, and starting randomly. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Because I think for so many people, they think that poetry, that each one is going to stand alone. So I'm so glad that I asked, I asked that question because someone may have read it out of turn and may not have gotten 
as powerful an impact as, as what you intended. Now, I know that so many times when I ask this question and I ask someone to, to choose their favorite, they tend to answer many times like a parent would and say, oh, no, each poem is my baby and I don't have a favorite child. And it's like, I, I do understand. But, but so many times there is one that perhaps you, you felt, um, a little bit more impassioned to write or there was one that really spoke to your heart and, and you wanted to make sure that you shared that with, um, with the readers. Do you have a favorite poem or do you have one that, that you feel really speaks to readers um, more often than another? Yes, uh, Dr. Angela. There is the poem... Uh, Dark Lonely Road really enlightens the reader about where I was mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and spiritually in my journey. Uh, and uh, it just so happens I have the, uh, the poem right here if you are interested, if my readers, oh. my listeners are listen yes, interested please. in listening to it. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, uh, if you don't mind sharing, we'd, we'd love to hear. Yes, please. Uh, the uh, poem is called Dark Lonely Road. And I pray it uh, enlightens you. <clears throat> Only a fool believes a friend when they say they'll bleed for them and be there until the very, very end, beaten, abused, betrayed, and left for dead, walking astray in a wasteland of my own filth, fighting to live another day, finding strength in my will to find an alternative way to heal the wounds I can feel and learn to live from my, from my mistakes. I run when others yield, doing whatever it takes to battle through life's battlefield. Without sight, I learn to fight. My spirit can never be killed. I am the entity of the light that lights my way. To rest assured of my restless nights and pray to give me clarity to put an end to this endless fight. I walk through the darkest of sorrows among the demons of the shadows without a promise of tomorrow. In this sorrow, I refuse to wallow. My heart is what I follow. And I must repair my hollow heart. I will show no fear as it falls apart. I will stand bold as I play my part. I walk a lonely road, guided by the dying stars. This road is paved in gold, but this road is dark. I'm walking it alone, because life is hard, and I've always been on my own. But I've come too far to allow your words to break my bones. Swing your fist, cast your stones. My mental walls will remain thick. My mind is not an empty home. Verbal threats remain empty. My wisdom has grown, so they will never break me, though I'm broken already. I will exceed my expectations. I will forever be outspoken. You're only an hallucination. Were you ever really there? Scratch that. I don't need your explanations. I pulled the knife from my own back. This wound bled tears that were dried when they hit the road. The pain has cleared. My heart has sown. I don't need you here. I walk, walk alone down a road paved in fool's gold, but I no longer care that I'm on my own because I've created a dream out of nightmares. And if one thing is clear, it's that I have found clarity for the mask that I wear. I'd rather be alone for all eternity than to believe the end is near because a friend became an enemy when my prayers were left unanswered. I will need you to walk alongside of me to know where this road may lead. Because when I'm left to face my darkest hour, even my shadow fears walk beside me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said the title of that was Dark Lonely Road. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You can really, you can feel the passion as, mm -hmm. as you read it there. And it does take you on yeah. a journey. It, it really, really does. Now, for someone who who says that poem really it speaks to me that's that's me charles what do you what do you have to say to that person? Do you have any words to encourage the person who says, "Yep, that's where I am right now you are not alone. It may feel like you're oppressed and sores are aimed at you on every side. It may seem like you're closest friends just abandoned you or your mother and father walked out on you or whatever it is that uh, the abandonment you feel, it's, there is a God of comfort who is a father to the fatherless as he was me. 
and mm-hmm. a even though you don't always see him or feel him near, he is right there walking by your side. And he, when you cry, he cries with you. You cry on his shoulder. And he listens to you as you vent to him. And he grieves with you. And mm-hmm. it, it won't be like that forever. Mm-hmm. Ah, such a beautiful sentiment. It won't be like that forever. What a beautiful way to wrap up this particular part of um, of the interview. Now, it is time for us to take a short break. Um, before we go, can you remind everyone, what is the title of this book? Uh, where can we get a copy, and how do we stay in contact with you? Darkness Before the Dawn. Uh, you can find me on uh, my website, charlesgatesjr.com. And you may contact me through the email service I, I have on my website, or you can look me up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Charles Gates Jr. I love it. All righty, listeners, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back you so much for spending time with me here on Daily Spark. I am Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Charles Gates Jr. And we are talking about his book of poetry. Now you guys know that I love a good book of poetry. It allows you to really express yourself in a way that um, perhaps writing a novel does not. We kind of talked about that a little bit earlier too and Charles even says it makes you vulnerable sometimes because you are standing alone as the author and I love that we need to be vulnerable sometimes there's nothing wrong with that we are okay exactly how we are now Charles my next question and thank you so much for for sharing some of your poetry um, with us today is I know that with so many authors one book just isn't it you know, there there are other stories they they want to share. There's other pieces of poetry that perhaps they want to share. Do you have uh, any any books in the works? Um, how do you feel about being an author? Do you want to write more? Yes, I will be doing recording my story until the, the day I I die. Um, mm-hmm. I don't see me ever putting down the pen or the laptop and just stepping away from it. I it's my life, you know, mm-hmm. but. Uh, yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I have written other works, and I'm currently writing a second book of poetry based on everything that happened after my life uh, from the moment the first book ceased. And I actually, I take the reader back to the beginning of my life where, mm-hmm. uh, where the childhood trauma I faced pushed me on the journey that led into my first book. So it's the that's going to be interesting. Other than that, I have a novel based on my testimony of breaking out of the occult and how God used that uh, for my testimony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned that you have a novel. What's the, what's the title of your novel? From Darkness to Light, with the subtitle, A Sinner's Memoir. Mm-hmm. From Darkness to Light. And is that, uh, is that already published? Are we, are we able to pick up a copy of that as well? Yes. If you go to my website, under the books category that I said about earlier, mm-hmm. um, it actually is displayed on the same page. So it's I very easy, that. accessible. To get, right. Smart. That is, that, that mm-hmm. is very smart of you. Make it easy for everyone to get part two. Now, the fact that one book is a book of poetry and the second is, um, is a novel, um, did you did you make it an easy read for for people to make the transition from a book of poetry into the novel? Um, it, so should they should they purchase book one before they purchase book two, or can they purchase book two standing alone? Um, they tie in together, but not so uh, they not weave so close together where you won't mm-hmm. understand one without the other. Um, okay. The novel does my poetry is expressed through the novel you see me writing poetry and how how i coped with that uh and how it helped me to lead me on a journey and how god spoke to me in that shed and through poetry 
to find the truth of who he is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I love how there seems to be somewhat of a theme um, between the two books. You have Darkness Before the Dawn and then From Darkness to Light. Um, did you intentionally um, choose the word darkness to, to make sure that, that people understood that you were going from one stage into the next? Or did it just kind of seemingly happen? Well, after I I was saved, I, I felt like the Lord told me to write a book about my testimony and call it From Darkness to Light. And mm-hmm. that mirrored my darkness before the dawn. Darkness before the dawn is like my poetic story, my poetic journey. And From Darkness to Light is a story that uh, happened, the, the, the literal translation of it. Although both are true stories and stem from the same coin, they are not necessarily you don't have to read one to read the other but i do i do recommend it mm-hmm. you get a full in-depth look at my life mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now i like how you use the word dawn and then you use the word light um should someone sh- is it intended for for the reader to pick up on the on the fact that you know the dawn is coming like if you can just make it through the darkness that morning will come and then the next is purposely light is here morning is here a new day for you is now here was that done purposefully no it just kind of happened really (laughs) (laughs) it's ironic the way it was uh organized uh Mm -hmm. i didn't know what i was doing but god did and absolutely uh, (laughs) Uh, yeah, but yeah, they stand for the same coin, really. But dark, the dawn is the promise of what is to come, and the mm-hmm. light is the light of Jesus. Well, uh, all what is what it boils down to, and the life we ab- we abide in and live in Him. And mm-hmm. the, yeah, the dawn is like the transition stage, but the light is the embracing stage. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. Now, you kind of um, talked about it a little bit earlier uh, in in our time together that God spoke to you through your poetry and that your poetry is, is what really kind of helped reestablish your faith and, and make you the person that you are right now. Um, how intense was the the spiritual battle that you had to go through to to bring you to where you are now? Yeah, there was a huge spiritual battle that uh, resulted in my changing my uh, perception of uh, everything I thought I knew. Because I realized like my perception of reality was distorted, and I was th- seeing through a broken lens. And God helped me see. Through like many of those glasses and helped me see from a different vantage point that really enabled me to uh, my my life to spiral down a different direction and uh, the spiritual battle was intense. I had to completely uh, renew my mind and mm-hmm. my my soul and mend mm-hmm. things that were broken. Oh yeah, I can I can imagine, and you know it's it's. It's so interesting that you say that, that you had to mend it. And I think that that's the, the issue that so many people come um, come to is that they get to the point where they understand that the mending needs to happen, but then they actually don't do the mending. And then they wonder why. They keep kind of repeating the, the, the same cycles. And that's just a part of, of being human. We're going we're gonna to get to those points where we need to take a look at ourselves and go, what am I doing? What do I need to do differently? And, you know, how how can I make sure that I'm doing what God has asked me or called me to do? So you are you are so right. I had one author one time say that he was running away from being an author. Like he just totally did not want to do that. He was like, no, no, no. This is not no matter what. He's like, God kept bringing me back. People kept saying, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. He's like, no. And he says, for five years. I ran, but, you know, that year that I finally said, okay, God, fine, I'll write the book. He says, boy, has my world changed because I did what God told me to do. So I, I hear you. I hear you on that. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's like no matter what, we have to we have to do what we have been called to do on, on this earth. All of us have a purpose. And when Amen. we walk in that purpose, it makes a difference. 
I, I tell people, it's kind of like when we're walking along a path, you know, there's people along that path, and there's somebody waiting for us, for each and every one of us, to do a particular something. Someone's waiting. Someone was waiting for you to share your story today. The fact that you're on the program is not happenstance. I don't believe in happenstance. I believe that someone needs to hear your story today. Not me telling it, not somebody else telling it, but your story because your words are going to make the difference for them. Your words are going to be that light that they need to need to hear, need to see. So um, I, I think it is very powerful that each person be on and, and walk in that purpose. So that is that is awesome. Now, before I let you go, if if I remember um, correctly, you said that you are not going to stop writing, that you are definitely going to keep writing, and, and you know that that is, that that is your passion. Um, do you have any... Um, potentially new things. So we know that you have a book of poetry. We know that you have a novel that you have written. Do you have anything that's maybe on the back burner, anything that you want to release in, in the in the future? Do you have a teaser for us or are you kind of on a on a break from writing right now? Uh, no, I'm definitely not on a break from writing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in fact, it's uh, gaining a lot more momentum. And I plan on writing books of poetry about my life story uh, all throughout my life, as long as, uh, as well as releasing a novel based on my uh, journey of faith alongside the books of poetry. And I will be releasing them around similar times so that the reader can really get a feel for what I'm going through at the time of their release. Uh, so it's going to be a journey. And I also have, like, a fictional story on the back burner that uh, I'm starting to work on, but I can't reveal anything about that yet. That's going to be very interesting. Right? <laughs> I can understand that. Well, you know, you have, you have shared so much today, and I'm pretty sure that there is someone out there that you have inspired and you've empowered to keep moving forward. So anytime you want to come back on and share about a new book that you have written, please feel free to, to let us know. We would love to have you back on. Charles Gates, Jr., thank you so much for spending time with me today. You're welcome, Dr. Angela. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to have spoken to you today and to the listeners for mm -hmm. tuning into this wonderful, uh, empowering broadcast. I pray I encourage, we both encourage and inspire you today. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you again for being on. And listeners, as always, thank you for spending time with us here today as well. As Charles so lovely said it, we hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you to become your best self. As always, may God continue to shine his face upon you. May you continue to see his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you are truly blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.